Welcome, friends, to a late night edition of Crime Time with Duty Ron. Guys and girls, we are retired New York City police detectives. That's me and Ed Wallace with over 20 years of law enforcement experience between each and each of us. We are both retired NYPD detectives. If you like all things true crime related from that police perspective, hit that subscribe button, hit the notification bell so you'll get all things Duty Ron and when he's available. Ed Wallace, when we go live or upload another video. Uh, tonight, I, I, this this is a case that people have been sending in so many inquiries on dutyron.com. 20-month-old Quinton Simon went uh, technically missing, reported missing by his uh, mother uh, earlier in the month, October 5th, early in the morning, 6 a.m. There was a phone call made to the babysitter at 520 in the morning not to come uh, a lot of suspicious uh, things in this case a lot of things moving parts going on we got the FBI searching in a landfill uh, but when we before we get into it I want to just say a special thank you to the patreon supporters mm -hmm. the channel members and all the folks who positively engage in this community you guys are what makes this a great place and I give you guys thanks and praise for your questions, your kind words, your um, informative engagement with Ed Wallace, myself, and all the great guests that we have on here. So before I get into it, I want to say hello to a couple of people. Uh, Dawn Marie, one of the great mods here that does uh, God's work. She's out there working hard. Hi, Marie. Good to see you. Thank you for joining. Tina's here. Princess Michelle, R-D-N-A-C. Hey, by a show of hands quickly, before I start going into this and showing you guys a little bit of media, how many of you guys, by a show of hands, putting a one in the chat if you're following this case, put a two if, in the chat if you're not following this Quentin uh, Simon case? I think a lot of us are. I have been watching it closely uh, since early in the month, and I've been watching some of the things that have unfolded. I hate the person of interest um statement and now uh, his mom is uh suspect numero uno so it looks like a lot of us are, are are throwing number ones in the chat uh miss donna marie good to see you thank you for joining uh, i i'm pretty sure that a lot of us are jennifer nobles great to see you mystery maven is here as well i mean there's so many of you guys piling in the chat thank you for that engagement it looks like everybody's on board all right um Early on, there was an interview with the babysitter. Now, this woman, um, I have her name written down here. I don't want anybody to go and attack this woman and try to interview her or try to talk to her. But the babysitter is Diana um, McCarta. Um, she seems very genuine. I'm a really good judge of character. Like, on, for, you know, like uh, I, I could judge somebody just by the statements that they made. And I want to play the very first piece. And this was early on in this thing. Um, it was an interview uh, of this woman. And she legitimately seemed very upset and very, you know, very relatable. You know, she was not telling a story here. So let's take a peek at this early footage. This um, this news piece, uh, this uh, this actual station covers this very well. They do a great job. This reporter tweets out, and I actually reached out to him. He's the only guy that I reached out to, and he said um, that he would be uh, honored to come on with Ed and I. I think tomorrow, hopefully during the day, we're going to do a deep dive into the forensics of this thing. So we're going to talk about the search at the landfill. It's the waste management landfill uh, right outside of uh, this, in, in, right outside this area. It was where the garbage is taken from this neighborhood and we'll talk in detail about that search but let's listen let's take a listen into this more about how this morning played out with this family and the babysitter who was originally supposed to be at this home this morning news three brian gallagher also here with me at this scene tonight with those details thank you brett earlier tonight i talked with the toddler's babysitter she is sharing her concerns tonight it's an interview you will only see on WSAV News 3. I am been keeping Quentin and Zane for six months. Um, okay, so this is the babysitter. I, I'm not going to stop it again after this. Just to, I saw a couple of questions in the chat. So this is the babysitter. She was told at 520. She's going to tell you 
uh, in this interview, I was told at 5.20 a.m. that I didn't have to come at 6 a.m. Uh, and then shortly after 6 a.m. is when the parents report uh, the mom, Le Le Liani uh, Simon, she reports her son, Quentin, missing after they told her you won't be needed today. And she says that she's always there, even when they go to work or when they don't go to work. And grandma, um, she always comes and helps out. So th this is the first red flag for me right away. Um, I kept them yesterday. The toddler's babysitter. She is sharing her concerns tonight. It's an interview you will only see on WSAV News 3. I am been keeping Quentin and Zane for six months. Um, I kept them yesterday and they went home last night. Diana McCarter says she babysits little Quentin and his siblings and was supposed to watch them this morning. She says she was confused as to why plans would change so suddenly. I got a text this morning saying that they would not be here. I would not be babysitting them at 529, which was kind of odd because I have them even when she doesn't work. 30 minutes. So I, I, I got it. And, and again, I'm going against my word. I have to stop it. If you home in on this conversation right here, it right away reeks something's wrong. Because she said, I always come over, even if they don't go to work or if they do go to work. So she's always there watching not only just this 20-month-old uh, Quentin, um, a, a sibling as well. So uh, let's take a peek back at this again. It's later, 6 a.m. Them this morning. She says she was confused as to why plans would change so suddenly. I got a text this morning saying that they would not be here. I would not be babysitting them at 529 which was kind of odd because I have them even when she doesn't work. 30 minutes later, 6 a.m. was the last reported sighting of Quentin, according to police. Diana says other family members asked her where Quentin might be. And then I get a text at 9 o'clock saying, have I seen Quentin? I immediately go to their house. I try to help them look. They didn't want that. So I've just been waiting around like everybody else. Diana and other neighbors are shocked by the news and wonder what could have happened to little Quentin. My heart is broken. Um, I'm not his mother, I'm not his family, but I love him very much. And I just don't know what could happen. The police did a really good job of looking and where does a one-year-old go? They've covered a lot of ground. So this is, this is what's indicative of someone who loves on a child, right? This is how you act if you love on a child. But we hear after this, um, you know, this was early on in, in this thing. Just recently, we heard that Quentin's mom and her mother, the grandmother, were at some bar having shots and carrying on while the FBI is searching in a landfill for their son. Let me ask you something. Where would you be if this was your son that went allegedly missing from your home? Where would you be if the FBI was searching in a landfill for him? Wouldn't you be outside the barriers of that landfill? Because they weren't allowing anybody to go in there. Uh, so the gates were closed. But would you be in a bar taking shots and being promiscuous and trying to get people's numbers and flirty as the news report, which I'm going to play next so you can hear it? I would be standing there waiting to find out what's going on, or handing out flyers. This woman, you could hear her voice crackling. She legitimately loves that kid. And it's you can tell. It's clear. It's as clear as day. So this is a situation that is disturbing, to say the least. Let me let the rest of this play for you guys, and then I'll, I'll segue over to the next piece. So I've just been a clock saying, have I seen Quentin? I immediately go to their house. I try to help them look. They didn't want that. So I've just. They didn't want that. Been waiting around like everybody else. Diana and other neighbors are shocked by the news and wonder what could have happened to little Quentin. My heart is broken. Um, I'm not his mother, I'm not his family, but I love him very much. And I just don't know what could happen. The police did a really good job of looking. And where does a one-year-old go? They've covered a lot of ground. Again, we will continue to update you with the latest developments online and tomorrow on WSAV News 3 Today.
In Chatham County, Brian Gallagher, WSAV News 3, on your side. Now, I want to let you guys know, I mean, I'm sure all of you that are following this thing closely, um, you guys know that there is a circus going on outside of this home. Um, there's people from YouTube going live outside the home and chanting and putting stuff. And there was two or three uh, folks from YouTube that were blocking pedestrian uh, vehicular traffic and they were arrested last night. Uh, I don't know the particulars of it, but I know in New York City, you can't block sidewalks, you can't block vehicular and or pedestrian traffic. So if you block vehicular or pedestrian traffic, the NYPD will either summons you and or arrest you. So um, those folks were arrested for violating some type of, um, you know, some type of code in that uh, in that county. Uh, and, you know, you're not. That's that's nothing productive. That's nothing that's going to help find uh, Quentin Simon. So um, I don't encourage anybody to do anything like that. Um, and, and again, uh, let's let's take a peek quick at this landfill search. All right, this has been going on. Um, there's a lot of people up in arms that they took a break for the weekend. Um, it went on for I, I believe four days. And Ed Wallace, who I just saw in the chat. Uh, he could tell you, my brother can tell you, and I personally wasn't at the landfill in Staten Island after September 11th, but I had many friends who worked at that landfill sifting through uh, remains and, and garbage was all around. Uh, it's not a pleasant thing. You know, you're in the white Tyvek suits and you're going to see the FBI agents here in, in those Tyvek suits. It's a very toxic environment. It's uh, very unhealthy. Uh, yeah, Ed, I know you were there. Um but th this is what they went. This is what they were doing for days, and they took a break this weekend because, let's face it, okay. If in fact the police chief is right and all of their intel is correct, he was put in a dumpster, discarded as trash, and taken by a waste management truck, and they know where all of the garbage from that s specific zone goes. And it's in a certain sector of the landfill. So they know it's just a process of elimination and it's going to take time. But he's not going to go anywhere. His remains are not going to go anywhere. Um, and they're they're taking the break for the weekend. And it's a lot of budgetary stuff going on. We heard about this budgetary nonsense in um, the Summer Wells case. Remember, uh, Ronnie Lawson and the whole crew had 300 plus people and they were paying overtime. Don't you remember this by a show of hands in the chat? Who remembers when Sheriff Ronnie Lawson had to go with Tim Coop? That was the um, Hawkins County search and rescue guy, Captain Tim Cook, Coop, Coop, not Cook, Coop. They had to go before the city council or the council and explain or ask for money to continue to search for summer wells. By a show of hands, who remembers that? I do because we were all outraged by that. Like, what? You don't have the money to do this? Well, it seems like um, this uh, the same county is having that same problem, is they had to take $250,000, $250,000 from school safety cameras, um, the school safety camera revenue that they got from people who go fast in the school zones and get ticketed. They're using those monies to fund... Um, to fund further searches. Uh, Jennifer, thank you so much for the super chat. She says, I'm making you and your con uh, and your command. I commend Dr. Moskowitz because I agree. Let's start this for baby Quentin. He needs to be found and there. Uh, they need resources to help find this boy. I, I agree. I, I mean, that's exactly what I'm talking about. Thank you, Jen. Uh, I got to look back for Dr. Moskowitz, but I'm not going to lose my train of thought because I'm always good for that. Uh, I'm glad you're covering this. We are here to learn, says Dr. Ed and Julie. Thank you. Thank you, Ed Wallace, Joe Murray. Love and respect. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so they're taking the money from these red light cameras, uh, the revenue. Uh, they're not shutting the cameras down. They're just taking that revenue and reallocating it for searching for Quentin. So it's a good thing. It's It's not a bad thing. Uh, Jesse Lynn, I'm going to get into that in a few minutes. Give me a minute. Uh, we're going to talk about why uh, this mom is not in jail. 
Uh, and we're going to deep dive the forensics part of this. But let me show some footage from the landfill uh, before I get ahead of myself here. So let's 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 get ready for this. And for those of you who are maybe suffering from PTSD, maybe this might not be something that you want to watch because it is kind of sensitive. Now at six o'clock, the landfill search for Quentin Simon. It's been nearly two weeks since someone last saw the 20 month old. Our Andy Cole joins us now live from El Scottsdale Park, where investigators have set up a new command center. And Andy, police are now saying Quentin is likely somewhere at a nearby landfill. <laughs> Yeah, good evening, Shannon. Chatham County's police chief says he has, quote, every belief that Quinn will be found somewhere in that landfill. But a search like that, it's not easy. It's going to take dozens of people, many, many days. And the outcome, in the words of the FBI, is uncertain. Do y'all believe that Quinn was brought here and thrown in the landfill or thrown in the trash and Listen then ended up in the landfill? We believe that he, he was placed uh, in a specific dumpster at a specific location and it was brought here by regular means uh, was brought okay so this news reporter says straight out at a news conference this is the chief of the police right here so this is the chief and chief hadley is asked a very tough straightforward question and kudos to the news reporter for asking that tough question he said do you believe that quentin was why do you believe that Quentin was thrown out in the in, in a uh, a trash container in a dumpster, basically? And here's what he had to say: Brought here and thrown in the landfill, or do y'all believe is uncertain? Do y'all believe that Quentin was brought here and thrown in the landfill, or thrown in the trash and then end up in the landfill? We believe that he he was placed uh, in a specific dumpster at a specific location and it was brought here by regular means of disposal as we near two weeks since quentin simon went missing police are entering a new phase in the investigation dozens of fbi agents and chatham county investigators are scouring a landfill looking for any sign of quentin we did not want to end up at this point but the evidence has taken us here we are not just randomly searching this landfill we have evidence, specific evidence, that leads us to this large property. This new search comes after 22-year-old Leilani Simon, Quinton's mom, was named by CCPD as the prime suspect. She hasn't been charged or arrested. Police say the I agents and Chatham County investigators are scouring a landfill. So now I know my good friend Ed Wallace and my brother, uh, this looks like a familiar sight to them because when we were searching through the debris that was carted by truck, to the Staten Island landfill, um, you know, to Fresh Kills landfill in Staten Island. After September 11th, they spent many, 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 many months sifting through uh, debris. This is what they're doing here. They're sifting through garbage that has been compacted down and they are tediously, this is a tedious um, process. And uh, the folks from Quantico, uh, are were brought in here and this this drone footage is courtesy of the chatham county police department they threw a drone up and the fbi threw a drone up and this is um this is actual footage from uh one of the days of the searching looking for any sign of quentin we did not want to end up at this point but the evidence has taken us here we are not just randomly searching this landfill we have evidence, specific evidence, that leads us to this large property. This new search comes after 22-year-old Leilani Simon, Quinton's mom, was named by CCPD as the prime suspect. She hasn't been charged or arrested. Police say it's because they aren't ready. Do y'all know where Leilani is today? I, and I don't mean right at this actual moment, but do y'all know where she is? I believe she's still here in Chatham County. We do not believe she's a flight risk. And again, I'll ask one more time, what makes you believe that she's not a flight risk? I can't get into that. Okay, all right. I, I, every, who doesn't have a question about that? Okay, everybody is now looking, and let me get myself back on the screen for the effect. Everybody is, if you aren't thinking about this, then there's something wrong with you. And I know all of us are thinking about this. And I'll say it out loud, Brian Laundry. Northport Police Department, right? We're all thinking that in our minds. Like, holy 
can this Leilani now walk freely or take off freely on the run somewhere in the United States? The United States is a big place. If they took her passport away from her and they're going to make sure she doesn't leave the country, well, you could drive down south. And what do we have down at south? We got a border that is not being policed. Do you know how many places there are to hide within the United States? So I have to say this right now. I pray to God. I hope and pray to God that they got eyes on her. And did you see how this police chief, when he was asked, I, he said, I can't get into it. I'll, I'll run it back so you can hear the audio. One more time. What makes you believe that she's not a flight risk? I can't get into that. It's unclear how long. What makes you believe that she's not a flight risk? Now, there's a lot of stuff that we don't know about here, right? But I think of Brian Laundrie and the Northport Police Department, how they were watching him. Remember, it's the similar case. We were all saying, why isn't he charged with murder of Gabby Petito? Why isn't he charged with anything? We were saying the same thing about Leani, Leilani, or whatever the hell her name is. Simon's, uh, uh, Quentin Simon's mom. I know I screw up names all the time, so don't hold that against me. But Leilani, the question is, is why isn't she shackled and hogtied and dragged in, right? It's not that easy. And we have criminal defense attorney Joe Murray, who was fresh off a old homestead dinner tonight that he was stood up at. He was somebody here from YouTube was supposed to meet Joe Murray and Ange, and he didn't show up. Shame on that person or whoever that was, because now they've been now they've been banished. Um, so you you can't just ch charge somebody with something unless you have probable cause to affect the lawful arrest. They have electronics. They have probably a lot of stuff on the computer. Or, or cell phones and or cell phones. They have probably surveillance. They probably have a lot that we don't know about, but they need to do this the right way because you only get one shot at it. You get one shot. And if she's on probation in North Carolina, this is Georgia. This new alleged or um, potential crime that she's going to be charged with happened in Georgia. But until she's charged with it, she didn't violate the probation. They have to charge her with something. And if they rush to charge her just to violate her on parole, uh, probation, and those charges don't stick, then what do you got? You got ungats. You got nothing. And we don't want that to happen. We don't want her to get away with this. So you got to be patient. You got to do it the right way. Nobody here wants to see her get away with this. And I even know my friend here. So what do you think about this, ma'am? Oh, hell no. We don't want her to get away with it. So let's let the rest of this play. Long the search will take, but investigators say the search mom was named by CCPD as the prime suspect. She hasn't been charged or arrested. Police say it's because they aren't ready. Do y'all know where Leilani is today? I, and I don't mean right at this actual moment, but do y'all know where she is? I believe she's still here in Chatham County. We do not believe she's a flight risk. And again, I'll ask one more time. What makes you believe that she's not a flight risk? I can't get into that. It's unclear how long the search. Let me know what you think down in the comments section, what he meant by I can't get into that. I already gave you what I think it is, and I'm I'm pretty sure that I know why he said I can't get into that. But there has to be, and there better be, eyes on this woman. I don't care where she goes. I don't care if she, whatever she's doing, they need to know about her movements. So whoever's on this better not f*** that up. That's all I got to say about that. And I got confidence because I know that they're looking at these previous and past cases and saying to themselves, we can't let this happen in the name of this 20-month-old little baby. We'll take, but investigators say the search won't be quick or easy. I have every belief that we will find his remains here at the landfill. 
That's a pretty confident statement right there. I have every belief that we will find his remains at this landfill. That to me tells me that they have very, very, very strong evidence that he was discarded and put in that, put in that uh, dumpster and discarded as trash. And that in itself is sickening. And Andy, it looks like it'll be a large search. Who's leading that effort? Yeah, the FBI has already had all of their personnel from the Savannah and Brunswick offices on scene for some time now, but they brought in experts from Quantico and Atlanta to lead the search as part of the FBI's evidence response team. Shannon? So that's, that's what we have going on at this point right now, folks. Um, this is, again, uh, this, is a, a, this is a situation where you have to remain patient. You know, acting like a jagaloon and carrying on and demanding things from the police, they're working hard to make probable cause to affect a lawful arrest, to make, to get justice to be served, to make a recovery of this little, you know, 20 month old remains. And don't forget, this this thing dates, this started back on October 5th, right? Let me just look at my notes real quick. Yeah, October 5th, Wednesday, 6 a.m., reported. It's, it's quite a bit of time. We're going into the 23rd. So the, the decomp on a small 20-month-old child, little boy, little baby, is quick. So they're not looking for an intact 20-month-old. And I'm, I'm being descriptive. And, and Joe Murray, thank you for the super chat. And thank you, everyone, for those $20 super chats. Those are greatly appreciated. Um, and thank you to the new members. A 20-month-old is going to decomp quick. And what they're looking at here is uh, probably skeletal remains. I I mean, I, there's no other nice way to, for me to say it, and I'm not going to sugarcoat it and lie to you guys about this. <sighs> That's what they're looking at here. And if they bagged the remains, in other words, put him in like a plastic or some type of garbage bag, which I'm hoping that they did, that will do a little bit of, you know, keeping everything together but we we're going to watch some of the some of the footage from my good friend uh, nerdy uh, nerdy attic uh attic and he he has some footage from the fbi that was posted and you see a lot of any landfill is going to have bird activity they're going to have vultures they're going to have uh lots of stuff that peck at the garbage and the food that's there so um there's going to be there's bird activity at every landfill, no matter where you go. I've been when I've been to Aruba. There's a landfill there. There's bird activity. Uh, Doctor Ed says, "Duty Ron, you give so much education and love to the victims' families and these heinous crimes. Thank you uh, so very much, Doctor Ed. Thank you, Doctor Ed, and thank you every, for everything that you do and all of your consults and your friendship uh, between you and Julie." Um, just Julie, you guys are a, a fantastic team out in Pocatello, Idaho. So keep on doing what you're doing. And I thank you. I give thanks and praise to you, my good friend. Um, so yeah, man, this is this is a difficult case. This is really difficult because there's so much going on in this. Now let's take a look at this. This is gonna piss a lot of us off. And and there's no getting around this. There's no way not to get pissed off about this. This is the mom partying at this bar on the day that the FBI is searching for her son. She's with her mother, and shame on the mom, grandma, Billy Joe Howell, right? Shame on them. But let's play this. I got to play it. Um, so let me, let, me, let me cue this up. Technology has got the better of me tonight. It's late. But let's play this. And you guys are going to get pissed off together with me on this. 
for the body of a 20 month with new information in the search for the body of a 20-month-old boy. Tonight, we are bringing you content you will see only on News 3. It is a picture of Quentin Simon's mom at a Tybee Island bar just hours after federal agents left a landfill looking for her child's Now, you just heard this reporter. You, you don't have to adjust your, your screen. She just said you're going to be looking at a still photo of Liani. Simon, Quentin's monster mom, partying, taking shots, running up a $300 bill, and flirting with the help. It's disturbing. Let me highlight some of these comments. Kath, I agree wholeheartedly, and thank you for being a channel member and a great friend. Um, Angie... Marshall says, and not to mention the grandmother. Yes, the grandmother, the one who had custody of Quentin, partying and carrying on. I mean, I don't know if she was doing shots, but she's there with her daughter. Wouldn't you think that the grandmother should say, hey, maybe we should be out at um, waste management at the landfill? The, the reporter looks sick to have to even say it. Absolutely, Jen. Absolutely. Let me know in the chat and down below in the comment section what you think about this. And don't hold back. Body. So far, Simon's meant you will see only on News 3. It is a picture of Quentin Simon's mom at a Tybee Island bar just hours after federal agents left a landfill looking for her child's body. Disgusting. So far, Lilani Simon has refused to comment on Quentin's death. Leilani, do you have anything to say? Leilani, tell us where Quentin, what happened to Quentin? Today, federal agents and police officers returned to a landfill for a second day to scour the property for Quentin's remains. I mean, this is what they're the working with, folks. For a second day to scour the property. If you look at this, this is an on-scene, on-the-ground look. These guys are in these, the Tyvek suits. They got um, breathing respirators on. And I tell, I could tell you from my World Trade Center days, I, at the end of, um, at towards the latter part of this, I was issued one of these um, breathing apparatuses. And when you put this on, it's so hard to breathe. And now they're scouring through this in the Georgia heat. And they're scouring through this garbage. This is garbage here, but they're looking for a set of little 20-month-old human remains. So they're not just raking through that wickedly. They're doing it gently. I'm sure Ed Wallace can come on and will come on with us and tell us exactly how this is done, how painstaking this is, because you can't just rush through this. You can't rush through this because you're looking at you're looking for a little 20-month-old angel. So this has to be done very carefully and very meticulously. Let's let the rest of this play. We're going to get very angry uh, pretty soon. For Quentin's remains. Officers returned to a landfill for a second day to scour the property for Quentin's remains. WSCV's lead investigative reporter, Brett Buffington, is joining us live now from the Joint Task Force Command Center near that landfill. And that is where the search for Quentin continues. And Tina, some dozens, dozens of agents, they just left for the day. They started at sunrise this morning. They will be back at sunrise. I just want to tell you that um, this news reporter, Brent Buffington, um, I, I'm communicating with him and he I, I'm thinking on probably Monday evening if he's available, I'm going to have him join us um, for a discussion on this case. And I want to get from a reporter in the local area, you know, boots on the ground. I want to hear from one of the local reporters. And he was very gracious and very generous to say, you know, I'm going to check with my station and I'm going to make sure. Uh, that it's okay for me to come on with you, but uh, I'm pretty sure that he's going to be joining us 
And that's going to be an interesting thing. And I'm going to ask you guys to maybe get some questions together and throw them, throw them to me on dutyron.com. Uh, and Brett Buffington uh, seems like a, a, you know, a very thorough reporter and he's out there. He's out there getting a feel for what's going on. So let's listen to what he has to say. Tomorrow. And some dozens, dozens of agents, they just left for the day. They started at sunrise this morning. They will be back at sunrise tomorrow. They told us yesterday that this search, it could take days. This is the shot from above. Federal agents lying. If you take a look at this, I mean, this is not a small on taking, you know, this is a very big area, but the good news is, is that they know, and you could see they wet the, they wet the whole area down with a water truck. They wet it down. You can tell by the dry patches up here where it says two minutes left. You see this dry patch where my, let me know if you guys can see uh, my cursor here by the little two minute left mark. See this dry patch here? Well, you could see the wet area. This is a water truck. They hose this all down to keep the dust and debris from becoming, um, you know, too much. So um, let me just see. Can you guys see that? Yes. Okay, great. Thank you, Holly. Thank you, um, No Robinson. Sober drunk. Yep. All right, cool. All right, let's let the rest of this play. Lined up, raking through garbage. Yesterday... This is the shot from above. Federal agents lined up, raking through garbage. Yesterday, this went on for hours. Today, this is the shot that is trending. That's Lelaney Simon, the only suspect Disgusting. in her son's disappearance. Lelaney, her mother, Billy Joe Howell, and others at a popular Tybee Island bar last night, just hours after the search for her son wrapped up. We've learned from the people who waited on them. They took shots, got flirty, and even demanded one waiter's phone number. The investigative unit with the shot showing the missed phone call. That number from Billy Joe Howell's cell phone. That grandmother today telling these tidy her mother, Billy Joe Howell. Did, did, did you hear that? I, 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 can't, I can't even I can't even believe that. But that's, that's, that's the truth. Stingray seafood. And, I, and please, I, I listen, man. I know there's a lot of jagaloons out there. Don't go to the stingray and don't try to talk to these people. This is part of the investigation. Don't, let, let, me, let me get myself back on and then we'll finish this. Listen, here's what I'm going to say. And, and, and you could take this for what it's worth. This is coming from someone who's done investigations in the past. And I know what has to be done in these investigations. Don't interview potential witnesses or potential subjects in cases like this, because all you'll do is ruin it for, for a, a prosecutor. You'll have a def criminal defense attorney like Joe Murray. I'm not saying Joe Murray is going to handle the case, but you'll have a criminal defense attorney with the likes of Joe Murray having a field day with this thing. Don't interview potential witnesses for your financial gain or people who could be potential subject, subjects. You should not want to even speak to any of these people in fear of giving a criminal defense attorney a freaking ground ball to get their client off on a technicality. The mystery maven. I know you, can I get an amen from some of the attorneys in the audience? Um, I, I, let me see. Where's Joe? Where? Okay, there's Joe. Yeah, not a good look. Not a good idea, Ron. Joe, I'm going to have to have you come on. Uh, maybe you and Jess can do a double team on this. Matty Boy Sully is throwing out the angry faces. Um, if you see anybody doing this stupid, this stupid sh on YouTube or on Facebook Live or on Twitter, they're not helping this this kid. They're not helping this little baby, Quentin. They're helping the mom or whoever is responsible. It might be, don't forget, it might not just be, be Leoni. It may be more people. She might have had co-conspirators helping her. So why would you want to speak to anybody 
that's involved in this case. The only people that should be speaking to him is the FBI and the, the lead detectives on the case. That's it. And, I, and, you know, people that are encouraging that behavior, listen, you could go out in front of the house and scream and yell and carry on and do all of that stuff. As long as you're abiding by the local codes, you know, noise ordinances. Uh, we have a we have a rule here in New York. You you can't gather with a certain amount of people for um, a protest without a permit. When it gets to be a certain number, you need to get a permit because the police have to take their personnel to police any arguments that happen in between these people. And now, let me just say something. Think about this. So now here's the scenario. Dozens and dozens of people or potential 20, 30, 40 people show up at these people's house, the potential suspects, you know, the mom's house, and there's disputes. What happens? The police get called and then they got to take personnel off of the case or off a patrol where someone could be getting shot or stabbed somewhere or somebody can be dying of a cardiac arrest or a, a really serious call for service. And they're there taking care of jagaloons, taking care of bull crap because people want to have their, their moment. And who, who does that hurt? Quentin Simon. It hurts him. Because it takes it takes personnel off of the case. And they're taking a break this weekend for A, health reasons, B, to figure out their finances. But I think it's mainly because of the mental health and the health of being around a landfill. So, you know, think about it. Think about this stuff. Good night, Ed. Have a good night's sleep. I know you went to a wedding tonight. So good night, brother Ed. We, I'm going to do something tomorrow on this, so hopefully you get a good night's sleep and you're ready to go tomorrow, Ed. So here we go. Let's let the rest of this play because I'm fired up right now. And others at a popular t shot that is trending. Garbage. Yesterday, this went on for hours. Today, this is the shot that is trending. That's Lelaney Simon, the only suspect in her son's disappearance. Lelaney, her mother, Billy Joe Howell, and others at a popular Tybee Island bar last night, just hours after the search for her son wrapped up. We've learned from the people who waited on them. They took shots, got flirty, and even demanded one waiter's phone number. The investigative unit with the shot showing the missed phone call, that number, from Billy Joe Howell's cell phone. That grandmother Gross. today telling these Tybee Island cops, we were starting to annoy her. We found Billy Joe Howell leaving this Tybee Island hotel. She didn't stop to talk to us then. And though it says she read this message asking about last night, she didn't text us back either. This is my baby, not yours! It was just over a week and a half ago. Billy Joe Howell got into this emotion fueled argument. You were wrong. I begged you to help. I begged you to help. Last night, the party, according to the waiters, ran up a tab over $300 while protesters stood in front of the family's house. This back either. This is my baby, not your. Isn't that amazing? It, th that appears to me that she's talking to the babysitter that we saw. Correct me if I'm wrong, but that I think that's Diana um, McCarter. Correct me if I'm wrong on this. I, I, I know that there's probably some people that have been following us really closely because I just really started getting into it um, over the, you know, this, these last few days. But I've been following it, but not this close. But this appears to be the way she's talking to it. This is my baby and not yours. Uh, so, yeah, so it, it, it is her. This is disgusting. Keep starting to annoy her. We found Billy Joe Howell leaving this Tybee Island hotel. She didn't stop to talk to us then. And though it says she read this message asking about last night, she didn't text us back either. This is my baby, not your Did you see how she was afraid she was going to hit her? Like she actually put her hands up to defend herself. 
It was just over. She didn't text us back either. This is my baby, not yours. It was just over a week and a half ago. Billy Joe Howell got into this emotion fueled argument. You were wrong. I begged you to help. I begged you to help. Last night, the party, according to the waiters, ran up a tab. Of How did she beg her to help when she told her not to come in the morning? And then when she came at nine o'clock that morning on day one, she, they told her to leave. So, so how did, how did she, how did she say that I begged you to help? Over 300 you were wrong. got into this emotion fueled you were argument. You were wrong. I begged you to help. I begged you to help. Last night, the party, according to the waiters, ran up a tab over $300 while protesters stood in front of the family's house demanding justice for Quentin. See, now, I, I have no problem with uh, protesters in front of the house. But again, you got noise ordinances. You got to follow all the rules in, of the road, right? Um, but you can't, you can't be out there trying to interview this woman, the, the mom. Nobody should want to talk to her. Nobody should want to talk to her at all. The only ones that should be talking to her are the investigators. Nobody should put a camera in front of her face and ask her something. I wish Joe Murray could come up with me and talk about this tonight, but I, I know that he's, um, I know that he's busy. I mean, he had a, he, he was into the, in the city tonight. Even you, Jess, I know you could talk on this. The grandmother, the brother, the mother, the sister, the cousins, the aunts, the uncles, nobody should be talked to. Not a good thing. Thank you, JC. Thank you. Thank you for being here. Protesting is part of our right to do that, right? But it's not going to solve the case. It's not going to bring Quentin home from this landfill where the police chief says that he knows that he's there. It's just a matter of time before they find him. And... You know, the bird activity and all the vultures and all the things that always fly over these landfills are normal. Uh, the chances of them finding those remains and grabbing them and flying away with them or, you know, doing whatever they were going to do with them is, is pretty slim. It's not, you know, that's not a concern at this point because, you know, the FBI has personnel there. And at night, once the darkness comes, they don't, there's no activity. It's always during the day. Um, but so thank you for hitting the like button. And guys, if you guys and girls, if you're not yet subscribed, hit the subscribe button, hit that notification bell. So you'll get all things Duty Ron and Ed Wallace when we go live or upload another video. Um, Duty Ron, Billy Joe had custody of Quentin. So how was uh, the mom able to remain living in the same house? And Billy Joe at criminal history, I'm baffled and angry. Uh, family is toxic. Baby should, or should press charges. She didn't physically hit her, so there's really not any charges that she could press at this point, unless she did hit her off camera. Uh, but you, you got to have, you know, you got to have some type of physical. You, they just had words there. There was nothing criminal about that. Um, but yeah, I was reading stuff because Luthy Goose he sent me a whole timeline, and it looks like the mom. The, the grandmother applied for um, child support because she's wholeheartedly supporting not only Quentin, but another sibling of his. So there was two, it was two kids that grandma is watching after. Now, we don't know the stability of grandma either. I don't know anything about her. I didn't look into her because, you know, again, I'm not, we're not on here to, to start investigating people. Ed and I, we're, on here to talk to you guys about evidence and the evidence collection. And we're going to talk about the landfill, how they search that and all of this stuff tomorrow. So um, let's let the rest of this play because I got a couple more things and then I got to wrap it up because it's, it is late. I started late tonight. I'm never on at this time. Listen, there are so many people asking tonight, why hasn't this mom been arrested? I begged you to help. I begged you to help. Last night, the party. You begged her to help what? You, Come on, give me a break, lady.
he, according to the waiters, ran up a tab over $300 while protesters stood in front of the family's house demanding justice for Quentin. Listen, there are so many people asking tonight, why hasn't this mom been arrested? She's the only suspect in the case. The Chatham County Police Chief doubled down on what he's told us yesterday, that when they file charges, when they file those charges in this case, if they file those charges in this case, they want to make sure that they don't get hung up on any technicality. Tina? Brett, thank you. The Chatham County Police Chief doubled down on what he's told us yesterday, that when they file charges, when they file those charges in this case, if they file those charges in this case, they want to make sure that they don't get hung up on any technicality. Tina? Brett, thank so you. So that's, that's, that's. Now, if that's, you would like to stay up to date on, on this second. case, you can do it by going to WSAV.com. All right. So it, that is a very good piece of information right there. When, if and when they file these charges, they don't want to get hung up on a technicality. And technicalities can be a range of so many different things. The legal system, there are so many things that are involved in this. There's moving parts that have to, every checkbox has to be checked off, you know, and you, you, we want justice to, to be served. We definitely want the justice to be served here. So let me see what else I got um, planned for you guys here before I wrap it up. All right, so that was the landfill search. All right, let's let's let, let's look at the probation issue, right? Um, with mom, let's 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 see if there's a little piece on that here. Um, but basically, uh, new information came out out a little a while ago, uh, not not a long period of time ago, but a short period of time ago uh, on uh, Quentin's mom. So I'm just reading quick. But I want to I want to play this clip for you because they they talk in layman's terms about this. But essentially, she had some felony charges from stealing and from a truck stop that she worked at. But let's just listen. I'm just waiting for the ad to play. Freaking ads are so annoying. Um. Okay. Always allow. All right, so records from North Carolina where Quentin's mom lived in 2021 show that she was arrested for a felony. And the felony was basically she stole two packs of cigarettes, a bag of popcorn, a drink from a Love's truck stop where she worked. In that state, uh, stealing from an employer is considered a felony, larceny by an employee. Uh, but she pled to the charge, and if she stayed out of trouble for 12 months, it would be a misdemeanor charge. It, was, it would be, be revised to a lesser charge. Uh, she had to serve 48 hours of community service and not be involved in any significant criminal activity. And that's where everybody gets caught up because right now she's not charged with anything because they can't officially charge her yet because they don't have all the check boxes checked off. So just understand that, yes, they want to charge her, but they don't want to rush to judge to charge her out of haste and out of um, out of emotion, right? The police chiefs and the detectives, they don't let the emotions get the better of them. They wait till all of the boxes are checked off, right? It was, all right, so people are still getting caught up on the things that she stole. She stole two packs of cigarettes. I don't know how much a pack of cigarettes goes for nowadays in 2021, a bag of popcorn and a drink from the Love's truck stop. But in the state of North Carolina, stealing from your employer is considered a felony, a felony larceny by an employee. We don't have that in New York. That would have been just a, a, a desk appearance ticket in New York. There would have been nothing, no felony charges. But in North Carolina, that's a felony. According to the clerk's office, under a plea deal, Liani agreed to a lesser charge under the terms she would have to undergo 12 months of unsupervised probation, unsupervised, serve 48 hours of community service, and couldn't be involved in any significant criminal activity. Now, if she gets charged with murder of Quentin, I think that, you know, she's not done with that year cycle yet. So on in addition to the charge, which this won't be anything, it'll just be icing on the cake, she'll get charged with the felony of the original North Carolina charge, right? So 
if she doesn't meet the conditions of that the plea deal i hope everyone's following me she gets charged with felony murder she now is falls back on the north carolina charges it reverts back to that felony larceny by an employee charge which will be nothing compares to her murder charge but she'll still be convicted of a felony based on her new charge. Now, if she went to this bar and got behind the wheel of a car and somebody saw her drive, that would have been, you know, a DWI and she would have gotten into into trouble whether she gets charged with a misdemeanor or a felony. Let's just say right now she smacks the babysitter or, you know, new charges are brought forward. If she smacks one of the people that are protesting outside of her house, That'll be a charge, and that'll they'll be able to lock her up for that. But they're not going to be able to hold her forever because that's a North Carolina charge. And where is she now? She's in Georgia. I hope everybody's kind of understanding what I'm saying. North Carolina is not going to come and extradite her for stealing from the truck stop. She's going to have an outstanding warrant for those original charges. And they would have to extradite her. Think about that. It it's not something that's probably probable and something that will happen. All right. Um, let's let's listen to the funding meeting because I want to get off of this because this this is just irking me. And I mean, we all know that um, we're going to wait for the 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 main event, which is going to be her being locked up. She's not getting locked up for violation of probation. She didn't violate anything as of now because she has no charges. And that's as most that's the sim- most simplest way I could put it. Um, you know, she's got nothing. So right now, that's a that's a dead end that we're all that tree that we're barking up is 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 dead. With the lack of better terms. All right, here we go. This is the about the meeting of the money and the uh, appropriating of funds. Right now, federal agents are finished with their fourth day searching a landfill looking for any this sign of Clinton kid. Simon. It's been 16 days since he went missing, and operationally, it hasn't been cheap. Definitely a big price tag. And our Andy Cole joins us now live with this exclusive report. Hey, Andy. Hey, good afternoon, Marvis and Brooke. At today's Chatham County Board of Commissioners meeting, commissioners uh, unanimously approved a reapportionment of $250,000 from the school zone camera fund to police for an active law enforcement investigation. We, of course, wanted to know what that was, and we pressed police to get those answers. They told us exclusively that the quarter million dollars is going to offset costs incurred while investigating and searching for little Quentin Simon. Here's what they told us on the phone. Quote, we've never had an investigation of this magnitude in the five years of this department's existence. Those funds are supposed to be used used for public safety purposes. Chief could not think of a greater public safety purpose than seeking justice for Quentin Simon. Chief Hadley told reporters early in the search that his detectives were working 18 to 20 hour days. Today marked day 16 of the search, and you can do the math. And Andy, what's the latest on the search so far today? Yeah, Chatham County tweeted earlier this afternoon that their expert searchers are actually going to be taking the weekend off. And that's to protect their health and to also coincide with the work operations at the landfill. They're closed on the weekends. They did say that detectives will conduct numerous interviews and continue continue to work on this case throughout the weekend. All right, so... So there you have it. Um, Waste management is off. Thank you, Dr. Ed, again, for the $20 super chat. Justice for this baby. Heartbreaking to Duty Ron family and many others. Thank you, Duty Ron. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Ed and uh, Julie. Uh, We we appreciate the support and and your friendship here. And you guys are our Crime Time with Duty Ron family doctor. So thank you so much for that. Uh, They said, again, I'll play it back, the audio for you guys. Essentially, waste management, that facility is closed. You see, they need the water trucks. They need the heavy uh, machine operators. 
the FBI, they don't have machine operators that are going to operate backhoes and all of that stuff. Uh, it's a private facility. They're closed on the weekend. Um, they secured the facility. Everything's locked down. Nobody can get in there. There's no more activity going on in there. They're closed for the weekend. They are going to go back at it, I guarantee you, Monday morning strong. They're going to go back at it strong. So some, I saw some people talking on Twitter and getting upset over this, that they stopped and that they were, they were mother – they were mother effing the police and they were like, you know, why aren't they searching night, you know, all night and all day? Um, you heard what they said here. If you listen to what this reporter said, it makes sense. So just on the weekends, they did say off and that their experts. Yeah, Chatham County tweeted earlier this afternoon that their expert searchers are actually going to be taking the weekend off. And that's to protect their health and to also coincide with the work operations at the landfill. They're closed on the weekends. They did say that detectives will conduct numerous interviews and continue, <clears throat> excuse me, continue to work on this case throughout the weekend. So there you have it. Um, you heard it right there. To take, they had the weekend off and uh, the, the facilities closed. So let me just say hello to a couple of people in the chat because Matty Boy Sully, he, he, he's a great friend. Um, he's here. Um, I, I know there's been a lot going on in his family. His wife's a, a registered nurse, daughter serving overseas. There's so much going on in the, in, in the Matty Boy Sully family, but he is an intricate part of Crime Time with Duty Ron. So thank you for being here, Matty Boy. Love you, and I hope everything is going good for you and yours. Um, yeah, so... Getting caught up on why aren't they out there? I mean, that that just for me, just you know, you gotta. They have to, you know, work within their means. And again, for health reasons, they need to take a break. Um, let's let's look at the little. I want to look at the clip from Nerdy. Um, from Nerdy, uh, he did a, he did some really good coverage. But he's he's always got music playing, so I want to just be careful with this. Hold on a second. All right. I'm going to have to. All right. So this is, I'm just, it's going to be, there's going to be no, um, there's going to be no, no sound to this because he, he plays like um, copyright music sometimes on this, but I'm going to play this and I'm going to link his channel down below in the description. Uh, Nerdy, thanks for allowing me to use it. And I'm hoping, I'm just assuming that he'll let me use this. So him and I are friends. I'm pretty sure this is okay. That that's his. Uh, this is his YouTube channel. For those of you who don't know him, let me just show it here. It's Nerdy Addict, and I'm subscribed, as you can see. So go on over there and subscribe to him. He does some good stuff. So let's look at the footage from his channel. This is 11 minutes. This is just some of his opening. Uh, let me go forward. So the stuff from Brian Laundry. Uh, let me go forward. All right. So here's where it starts. I think. This might not be copyrighted music. I'm hoping it's not. Sounds pretty basic to me. So this is directly from his channel. It's the aerial footage that was provided by the uh, Chatham County Police Department. Uh, and he's putting the source on the screen there. So this is giving you an overview of what they did and some of the searching at the uh, landfill. And this is the exact location of where they take the garbage from the home of Quentin Simon and that whole neighborhood. Um, so they know everything is gridded and everything is mapped where where garbage goes from different areas. Uh, so I'm going to link his channel down below, Nerdy Addict, just so you have it. We are vultures. What's his name again? So I'm going to link it in the description. No worries. You'll be able to click on it and get right over there. If one of my mods could link his um, 
channel and to just put it, drop it in the Dawn Marie if you're here or anybody. I don't, I, I can't see if there's any mods here. See, when I go late like this, all my mods go to sleep. So I'll just link it down below. Yeah, so now this is his stuff, I'm pretty sure. One of the roads leading up to the block. T-bone stop sign at the end of the road. So this is his drone footage, I believe. Thank you, Ange. Let me highlight that. This is his channel. Eddie T, good to see you. So aerial footage of the um, home and the location. <clears throat> I believe this is it right here, right where my cursor is. You can see the, the pop-up tent and the, it's like, like a little mini shrine that they have set up and a bunch of stuffed animals and balloons and so forth. This is the, this is the house right here. Uh, I agree with this statement. Thank you, Censored Nana. So here's the landfill. It's going to go straight from the house to the landfill. Very marshy area that they're showing. I mean, God, you, you would think uh, if they didn't have the advanced intel that they would have to search in this marshy mucky area here wow where's the house yeah that that's that's a troubling spot right there but i'm i'm glad that they got that advanced intel but let's look at that again so is this forward of the house i gotta ask nerdy about this Landfill where law enforcement believe remains are located. That's a lot of water right there. God. I, I don't even want to say it. I'm not even going to say it. Wow. Just wow. That's all I got to say. My God. I got to get Nerdy on here with me to talk about this. I wish we could summon him to come on over here. I know he's up. Thank you for this 70s porn music he's playing in the background. Thank you, nerdy. Yeah, some of his people are sending those messages in. You know, Janine, I don't know. But they, they have advanced intel that's that's telling them that, that he's not in that water. That's a big that's a big landfill.
I do, Kelly. I do know. I was born in 64. Everybody's getting a kick out of my statement. Yeah, it's because you can't play the copyrighted music. So it's that you're limited to some really crappy music. So he's kind of looping back. Well, I want to see what this is here. This looks like a swimming pool. Oh, this is the back part of the house. This is behind the house. There's like another, there's like lots of, so this is the front where everybody is. All right, that's good. I'm going to go back to that. So there's a swimming pool there. Wow, he got his drone right over the house. That's a great, great aerial shot. So there's a built-in pool in the back of this. This is the property here. Because this is the front of it right here. You see the pop-up tent down in the bottom. This is some good footage. Thanks, Nerdy. Gives you a pretty good overview. It's a pretty decent-sized property. And a lot of cars. So, yeah, people are saying the fire department drained that pool. Uh, but again, we're we're fast forwarding to where we are today. And what, what we are today is that they have um, very good intel. Uh, very strong intel and evidence that this 20-month-old Quentin Simon was discarded as trash and put into a dumpster and taken to that landfill. And that's tragic. It's sad. It's everything, all of the above. That's the liner that's ripped. There's no cover on that. Yeah, that's that's a nasty green pool. The neighbors. So this this footage gives us a pretty good insight. So that's that's about it when it comes to this stuff. I'm going to get myself back on. Um, so, yeah, we're going to pay close attention to this. Ed Wallace and I are going to go over the um, the forensics part. There's a lot of questions that we all have to ask Ed. What did they use at the house? Did they use luminol? Did they, you know, what would we expect on a, on a case like this for them to do crime scene-wise or evidence collection-wise? So we're going to we're going to grab Ed tomorrow hopefully during the day and uh it's supposed to be raining all day here. So I'll try to get Ed some time during the day tomorrow and we will go over this case uh from a forensic standpoint. And I think that should be uh interesting to say the least because Ed's going to have a lot to say about it. Uh let me see if there's anything else of not notable um Hold on, let me see what this is. Quentin Simon's babysit live stream later. Oh. I don't even like what that sounds like.
yeah, he's got some overhead footage of the landfill. Let me take a, I'll put this on for you guys. This is the actual location where they are, and it shows some bird activity as well. Yeah, I, Susie, I, I wouldn't encourage, again, this goes against everything that I stand for, you know, as an investigator. I would not encourage anybody. I know that this probably, there's probably so much that I don't know about that was already done. That is the kind of stuff that I wouldn't involve myself with because of my knowledge of this, you know? Uh, so Susie, thank you for the super chat. Billy, she says, Billy, Billy Joe told a story that he drowned in a bath. I, I, I don't even want to hear that. I don't even want to know about it because I would personally never report on that stuff. Um, and, and like I said, again, this goes against justice for Quentin. Uh, it's just not a good look. It's not something that's, if you knowingly do this, then, you know, it, that's like jagaloonish behavior as far as I'm concerned. Uh, I wouldn't partake in it. Anybody that does it, has got no ethics as far as I'm concerned. It, it, it's not it's not anything that'll lead to anything good. I'm going to do just a special show just about that, you know? So let me just wish you guys a good evening. If you're not yet subscribed to Crime Time with Duty Ron, please consider subscribing. I, I just realized as I was telling you guys something, I have a News Nation piece. I want to just play this for you guys. So let me play this News Nation clip. This is, um, let me see how, where this is. This is only from a couple, three days ago. So let me play this News Nation clip and then we'll wrap it up. Let's watch. Police believe 20-month-old Quentin Simon's body was put into a dumpster and then taken to a nearby landfill. Now an extensive search is underway at that landfill. Simon vanished from his grandmother's home almost two weeks ago. Police say starting today, they will be at the landfill every single day. We know that this is going to be a physically, mentally, and emotionally grueling task for our investigators and team. We want justice for Quentin, just like everybody else. Brett Buffington with our News Nation affiliate WSAV has been following this story from the very beginning. Brett, Thank you for being with us again. What do we know led the investigators to this specific location? Nicole, they have told us that they have evidence. They haven't gone into a lot of detail about that, but this federal ta this federal uh, uh, command center, along with the task force, including the Chatham County Police, they've set this up here some mile away from that site at this waste management landfill they are searching. A waste management landfill that is about seven miles away from that home where Quentin was last seen. It is among tons of trash that police now believe they will find the remains of Quentin Simon. The 13 day search has stopped here. A waste management dump. Police believe Quentin is here after being tossed out like garbage. We believe that he, he was placed uh, in a specific dumpster at a specific location and it was brought here by regular means. Police wouldn't tell us where that dumpster came from. They did say they were able to target the section of this dump where that trash was delivered. Now there is a meticulous line at a time search for this little boy. We brought in experts in landfill searches to guide us. It will be what those specially trained agents from across the country find here that police will use as key evidence in their case. What happened to Quentin? Today, Lelaney Simon has not been arrested. Police say they aren't willing to risk premature charges. Charges in a case that has been downright emotionally draining for the dozens of investigators looking for Quentin. That's coupled with determination and dedication uh, to so we can find little Quentin and, and provide him a proper resting place. Brett, is there any idea the how FBI, long this they have could take? the dump for the day? They I think, good question, Nicole. The FBI, they have left this dump for the day, but they'll be back as, as soon as the sun comes up tomorrow.
They told us this could last days, if not weeks. They did stop the trash from getting dumped in this specific part of the dump, according to law enforcement sources we've talked to today. But they still have to dig down back to the day that they believe Trent Quinton was dumped in that dumpster. Nicole? And Brent, I know you talked about Leilani Quinton's mother there. We know she's named a prime suspect. We also know she has not been arrested. Is there any indication that could change soon? I mean, I know they want to find, obviously, Quinton's body first. All right. Obviously, a key piece of evidence in this case will be the body or remains that they're able to find in this landfill. And the chief was asked that today. Why has this person who you've named a suspect as last week? not been charged with anything. And he told us that he wants to make sure when those charges are filed, their charges, that'll stick. All right, that makes sense. Yeah, we certainly hope Quinton is found soon. Brett Buffington, excellent reporting as always. Thank you. Thank you. So there you go. That was Brett Buffington. Hopefully we're going to have him on on Monday. Guys, I want to wish you guys uh, a great rest of your weekend. And if you're outside the country and you're already into Sunday, going into Monday, uh, have a great week coming up. Um, we're going to, again, we're going to be back live again tomorrow on this. Thank you to everyone who stuck in here. The folks who sent super chats, those of you who became subscribers and, um, and channel members. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, you know, if you want all things true crime related from a police detective's perspective, please consider hitting that red subscribe button and hit that notification bell. So you'll get all things duty ron when we go live or upload a video it's uh, about 12 40 a.m this is a, a record for me i usually don't go live or stay live this late so to my late night owls thank you for being here thank you to the moderators the replay viewers the folks who positively engage and i encourage you to leave comments down below in the comment section for ed wallace myself and all of the folks who are here pb and j Always great to see you. Thank you, uh, Grandma. Grandma, thank you for being here. Stacy, Mercy, Susie, Aussie J, Kelly K, Janine, uh, Joey Brooklyn, Sharing Sharon, Sweet One, Christina Marie, Rosie B. The names go on and on. I could just highlight these for another 20 minutes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate you guys. Love yous. Respect yous. And we'll see you soon. God bless the world. God bless the United States of America. God bless each and every one of us here in the chat, but especially all victims of crime and their family. Quentin Simon needs us now more than ever. This 20-month-old baby, this little innocent angel, let's bring him home. Let's bring him home and let him lay, be laid to rest. I'll see you guys on the next one. Peace and love from Crime Time with Duty Ron and Ed Wallace. I'll talk to you guys soon. Thank you.